Justin, how much do you think uh, it, it is likely that this will happen? Well, Peter, good morning. Uh, and the answer is, it is very likely. Uh, if you believe the figures, and frankly, one can interpret the figures any way you wish, whether it was going to be 22 billion or 40 billion, uh, you can adjust these very easily indeed. But let's put it in perspective. The overall, compared to the overall amount of our debt, compared to the overall amount of money of, in, uh, of income coming to the government and expenditure, this is still relatively small, mm. but will have a disproportionate impact on that one vital word for a recovering economy, which is confidence at the one time when you need to be able to encourage those people who've earned, uh, created most wealth, um, actually be able to continue to do so and attract more in, uh, to be able to actually get the economy larger and therefore earning more tax and therefore closing the loop. They're looking far too short term and they're going to come up with something which is uh, going to be painful because they've already told us that um, and not actually going to give us a clear target as to what's necessary. We, are, we know what we're good at in this country. Let's focus on that, being entrepreneurial, developing that. There's no shortage of money. Tax should be something which is targeted to actually help creating a growing an economy, not just smacking it as a hammer. Uh, otherwise, you're going to end up with some severe difficulties. And I feel that's what we're heading for. There are going to be various and uh, major political implications for all of this as well, Benedict. What do you make of it? I mean, I, there's nothing I can't agree on there with uh, with what Justin has just said. I mean, you know, the, the UK, if we're being honest with you, with each other, the UK economy has effectively been in recession for the last the best part of a decade, actually. The anemic growth that's been sort of propped up by fiddling of the figures and mass migration isn't really growth at all. We've stagnated. And yeah, a lot of other Western countries haven't done too great either, but that's not a reason to go, oh, well, that's fine. And the one thing that you do need uh, in this kind of situation when the economy is in the doldrums is that confidence for people to be prepared to invest their money, not just people in the UK, but obviously outside of this as well, to come in and invest. And, you know, we had all the the, the talk around the, the recent investment summit where, you know, everybody was saying, oh, happy days, there is investment coming. But of course, a lot of that had already been agreed before the talk of this budget um, uh, uh, ha had emerged. Uh, the simple fact of the matter is people, you know, th this is stuff that keeps on being said over and over again. People are being taxed to the hilt as it is. We're at sort of a record high tax burden in the post-war period. And the government is thinking, ah, oh, what, what what's really going to help people is by taxing even more things and making it even harder for people to take their accumulated wealth and to risk it by investing in other areas of the economy. Um, and on top of that, we're going to make it harder for businesses, many of which are already struggling, as it is, uh, to continue and prosper. I mean, that's you know, the just, point, just, isn't it? Just a farming example. Let's just take the remo removal of farming relief. It is not a secret in this country anymore that farming you know this really fundamental thing about getting food to your plate is really up against the wall at the moment and they're thinking what we're going to do is we're going to make it even harder for mm. family-run farms with incredibly tight margins to operate by whacking them with a great big tax bill that none of them have expected what on earth do people think is going to be the end result farms are going to go out of business well you're absolutely right on food production obviously incredibly important uh, justin i wonder just benedict talking about uncertainty there as well uh, what do you make of this speaking to businesses speaking to small businesses as well perhaps people investing on your uh, platform as well justin i just wonder is there more uncertainty than there has been with other budgets because this is going to be a fundamentally different economic set of realities that we have after the budget and there will be a lot of uh, small businesses for example worried about national insurance contributions yeah. uh, employer contributions is this uncertainty which always happens before a budget but is that, is that yeah. worse than 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 it has been previously no, my answer to that is quite clearly yes. One of the key issues being we've waited for a long time for uh, the change of government into actually now actually getting a budget going through. And that is absolutely crucial. So in that time, nobody knows what's going on. And if you don't know what's going on, all we're hearing is leaks and not necessarily very positive ones. And so for the instruction they're going out through most businesses, particularly small businesses, I'm not going to do anything at the moment until you can tell me what the rules are and then I can work out what to do. So instead of actually just being negative about this the entire time, give us a budget which recognises the problems they've got and therefore we're going to encourage those people and businesses, starting businesses, as Ben was saying, external ones as well, come in here because here they can see a well-organised uh, country most of the time, but infrastructure, good rule of law and those sort of elements, basic elements we sort of take for granted. But actually you don't have to go too away, but far away from Britain for you. Those are soft issues but really important. So actually, therefore, it is going to be, uh, in my view, uh, a very painful uh, budget. But for heaven's sake, give people a target they can aim for that we're all heading in the same direction mm. to close that deficit overall. But also that what they can do is adjust what they've already got. We'll be seeing this 
Treasury coming up with all sorts of lovely schemes of extending the debt period, extending the uh, the uh, or adjusting the interest rates uh, charged on the, on gilts and things like that. Um, all of those are quite feasible, and they'll be doing that right now. What they've got to be able to do is take it into the next stage, say, right, now we're going to see a longer-term growth period, so why not actually say to people on a high rate, we're going to ask you to pay more for a period of time, and they're going to drop it off. Mind you, you have to make sure it does actually change. Um, and for that, we're actually going to give you some other relief in other areas as well, be it for the families or, or healthcare, any of those sort of elements. Okay. Because remember, government doesn't need to invest anything. What it can do is create incentives um, and therefore actually provide you some sort of guarantees for part investment. That's how you'll create corporates really quite quickly. Okay. Um, gents, stay where you are just for a second. We've got a voice note from Jonathan and Barry St Edmonds on all of this. I want your reaction to what Jonathan has to say. Let's play this. There's a rising claim that uh, when you become a pensioner, you should no longer pay any tax because you've paid all your dues. That includes inheritance tax, capital gains tax, everything. How much does the country want from you? 1.1 trillion? Just think how wonderful it would be if... Um, we weren't paying six or whatever it is, seven million a day for illegal migrants. If we were not pandering to the net zero nonsense, green net zero and the taxes on that and the money the government wants to spend on that. And if we didn't send any money overseas, no overseas budget, then we spent the money on British people and Britain doing the right things for us and making this a wonderful, prosperous country for British people. Just, just imagine how good that would be. Uh, great show. Carry on. Thanks, Jonathan. Jonathan and Barry St. Edmonds there. There's a, there's a big point there, and foreign aid is one of those things, where the government says they have to cut things. It's saying to some uh, different uh, departmental budgets that they may need to go down by 20%, and we've seen various members of the Cabinet, the Justice Secretary, the Deputy Prime Minister, who's also the Housing Secretary, and also uh, the um, Transport Secretary saying they don't want those cuts. Benedict, I just wonder, with foreign aid, net zero, the kind of things that are pretty unpopular with our viewers and listeners, certainly, £22 billion pound black hole, we're talking about £40 billion pound black hole, depending on which day of the week it is. Uh, you mm. know, on foreign aid, for example, 16.5 billion paid on that, yet I would imagine there'll be no cuts to that. Where do you think cuts should be yourself? I mean, that is a good point, that there will almost certainly be no cuts to international aid. And why should we be surprised by that when actually we have a government that, has, as demonstrated with the Chagos Islands uh, fiasco a couple of weeks ago, isn't particularly committed uh, necessarily to its own people. It seems far more committed to not upsetting members of the international community, whatever that might be. So, no, I can't imagine that they're going to stop giving bungs to, you know, the, the Indian government, which, by the way, has a space and nuclear weapons program, but we still give them aid. Um, where is it going to be cut? But it's, I, what I would say is I don't think you're going to see any of the necessary rises that perhaps we do need in things like defence. And, I mean, it's interesting also, I think, that there's talk about potentially raising the NHS budget. Uh, you know, yeah, alongside... 10, 10 billion pounds. Justin, I wonder where, whether you think that will uh, is something that will happen and where you think the act should fall or could fall. Well, what reaction to that? Most people would not really understand that it actually just sort of a drop in the ocean. Uh, to take the overall NHS uh, bill. So a lot of being in another 10 billion. Sounds great, lots of uh, good money going in. We've seen this going through before. Um, I'm afraid that is going to be no more than just sort of a, a short-term uh, uh, sort of sock being given to way see what we're trying to do. So where do you try and cut? But it, that is really incredibly difficult. Who's got the money to try and cut? What you can do, one of the areas, is actually look at the funding of the government itself. And a struck then people could say this is financial cheating. Well, all sorts of things are financial cheating, like quantitative easing. What you can do is extend the level of debt periods. So you're not acting in such a short term uh, period. You can actually make sure the payments are adjusted by adjusting the uh, uh, replacing certain gilts with cheaper ones, mm -hmm. just providing shorter term uh, benefits coming through. Oh, but by the way, one of the key beneficiaries of the amount of debt we've got is. The government. Why? Yeah. Because they're one of the largest holders of government debt in the first place. Brilliant. There's no reason why you couldn't actually set off the debt with the assets you already owe um, and uh, owned by the government. It sounds rather creepy, but actually we're in a position... It sounds a bit mad, Justin. To be, to, it sounds a bit mad, to be honest. Both of you, thank you very much indeed. That's Benedict Spence, who's a Conservative commentator, and uh, Justin Urquhart-Stewart, who's an economist and chairman of Regionally, which is an investment platform.